Hey, today we're dealing with scatter plots 4.4. Lines the best fit. For those of you that are aware, I, I'm, I know everyone's dealt with scatter plots in the past, or you should have in one of your classes or in science. Scatter plot, the graph where you uh, plot a bunch of different data points. And what we're going to investigate is kind of different trends and different um, equations we can come up with based upon those trend lines and uh, what conclusions we can draw using those those different equations. So what I want you to do right now, work on Exploration 1 with your groupies, people around you. Okay, you'll need a ruler. That's why you grab one hopefully on the way in there. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, when you're drawing a trend line, when you're drawing a trend line, you're trying to get as many points above and below, well, about the same amount of points above and below the line. So when you're kind of when you're kind of estimating your trend line, right now we're not actually doing a perfect calculation for a trend line. Therefore, when you draw your trend line in, now that mine might might have been a little high there. Okay. When you draw a trend line in there, you actually are doing an estimation right now. You want to split those points somewhat in half. Yeah. You'd have to use um, you'd have to use residual values and go through it. We're not going to go through it. So. Okay, so right now you're just estimating. You're going to kind of try to split the points in half. So I could have probably could have dropped it down a bit more. I'm not going to worry about it. It's pretty darn close there. Okay, if I'm writing my equation, my equation is based now upon the line. It's not based upon the points. So the two things you need to do to write an equation, what are the two things? You need y-intercept and slope, so m and b there. So my y-intercept kind of looks like it's zero, though we've got these these like little zigzags mean you have a break in the graph. Okay, I'm going to keep that blank for a minute. I'm going to go with my slope. So if I find two parts on the grid, it looks like I hit my grid imperfectly in a lot of spots. So it looks like as I rise, I could go from there to even there. As I rise five, I run five. Okay. So my, so my slope is 1. As I rise 5, I run 5. My slope is 1. Remember, your slope is based upon your trend line. Brian, what are you doing? Oh, you're in your bag? All right, I won't even go there. Okay, your y-intercept is 0. So my equation is y equals x. All right. Explain the method we used. Well, we kind of just went through it, you know. Finding the y-intercept and slope. What conclusions can be made from the equation? What does y stand for in this? The wife's age. What's the uh, x stand for? So what, what conclusion can we draw? Doesn't have anything to do with... Well, I guess you could say as the wife age increases by a constant, by 5, the husband's age increases by 5. But looking at your equation, if Y stands for wife's age and X stands for husband age, we can say that they're, yeah, the wife's age and husband's age are generally equal. Okay? All right. Hey, why don't you take a look at example 2 or exploration 2. Hey, okay, go ahead and work with your groupies there. Make sure you stop me and ask me questions if you got them. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention up here. Hey, so if I'm um, taking a look at my trend line, mine I think is going to go. Oops, just ruler just slid. So it's like I will try that again. It's tough. It's kind of nice if you have a clear ruler, then you can kind of see what's going on. Okay. All right. What'd you guys get for slope? One third. One third. Okay. So it might vary a little. My y-intercept looks like it's at twenty. How many of you got a y-intercept around twenty? Okay. 
That's a round 20. Okay. Um, if I'm judging where my line crosses the, uh, the grid perfectly, well, it looks like at 20. Another place is pretty close there. It looks definite there. So it looks like I rise 6 and I run, holy moly, from 1960 to 2010. Rise 6, run 50. So my slope is 3 25ths. Okay. Now, for those of you, some of you said you got 1 tenth or 1 third. 1 tenth, 1 third. Okay. 3 25ths. In decimal form, those are all pretty close. All right. So um, draw a line that approximates the data. Write an equation of the line. If I change this to decimal form, let's round our slope to the nearest hundred. Okay. So let's go ahead and change that to an approximation. Go ahead and do that on yours. Rounded the nearest hundredth on it. Mine gives me 0 0.12. Okay. Now, now that yours is in decimal form. Now this is yours is in decimal form. You guys pretty close to mine? No. What was yours? Dude, yours way way different. You may have to check yours out. Okay. How many have one that's pretty close, like within a tenth or so? Okay. What what were some other numbers we got? Yeah. Point three three. You got one third as well. So you're rising. So did you rise one? How did, how did you guys, how are you getting one third? You're really close to one third. You're counting the squares? So you're going up one over three? So we got to look at the scale, right? So up one is two, over three is actually. Hey, so look at our scale. Up one is two, over three is how much? It's 15? Okay. All right. What conclusions can we be made uh, from the equation? So our equation, y equals 0.12x plus 20. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey guys, and if your slope is actually 0 0.12, you could, if we thought of that as one tenth, even if we rounded this to the nearest tenth instead, that would say for that's one tenth or one over ten. For every for every one year in age, the number of years or the age of the excuse me, for every one year here, we go up ten years here. Okay. Thank you. For every one year here, we go up ten years here. So the median age that the that which American woman first gets married increases one year every 10 years. It's kind of weird when you're talking about years, but it one year every decade, if you want to think of it that way. So in other words, as time increases, the average age that an American woman is getting married is, is getting, the, that American woman is getting older. Okay, she's getting older or getting married at a, a later age. Okay? All right. And this was our starting year, how much it was in 1960. Okay, use our equation to predict the median age American woman after their uh, at their first marriage in the year 2020. We have y equals. In this case, if I'm using mine, it would be 0.1x. We put in 60 there because that's 60 years from 1960. 
which would be approximately 26 years old. Okay. okay. Ladies and gentlemen, look at your student journal, please. Okay, so you guys should be working on page 114 of your student journal. Page 114, 1A, B, C. All right. What is the weight of the baby when it is four months old? 14 pounds, yes. Four months old, 14 pounds. Good. What is the age of the baby when it's 17.2? That is, yes, eight months. Okay, what tends to happen to the weight of the baby as age increases? Good. Good, its weight increases as well. It was, it does what? I didn't write it, I wrote it, but I said it increases, it just takes it. Oh. Okay. You connect it also to number four, you get a fish. Yeah, you do. All right, I want you to do numbers two through five. I'll let you guys come up here and put up your answers there. Number four is safe for me making a trip. Make sure you use a ruler. I'll leave a ruler up here for you. Mr. McCoy, number four seems to be making a traffic chat when I connected the dots. No. Um, the paper is upside down. You're upside down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fish. Wait, it's fine. <laughs> so that's how you get when you connect them. <laughs> no. Oh, shoot. I'll do number one. And you can just do one of them that's left. You didn't do one. Oh, you did. <laughs> the ultimate Okay, make sure these, you can see the fish. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Should, I, should I do this one too? What? You can also just look at the screen right there. Yeah. Sh should I do this one too? Uh, no. No? Get yeah. off. No? Okay. I was going to connect the dots, but I didn't feel like it. It's the same fish as the soul as well. I'm going to say. No, we're going to go on. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, need your attention up here. Wait, but we didn't do all. Number five isn't done yet. Number five isn't done yet. Bailey, you are um, someone that can... It has an act for the audience, so you're right. Okay, number two. Hey, if I was to draw a trend line on number two, say I actually zipped one in there, that gives me a positive correlation. That line is rising from left to right. Something to add to your notes here. When we're talking about correlation. You're looking at the slope of the line. If the line is rising from left to right, that is a positive correlation. Okay. If your line is falling from left to right, say like on number three, if you were to draw in a trend line, now I'm just quickly drawing one in there, that would be a negative correlation. Okay, it's falling from left to right. Just like slope. You're thinking slope there. Okay, if you're if you uh, cannot draw a trend line and you have to draw a fish, <laughs> um, or it's just no correlation at all, you would write no correlation. Okay? What is this one, positive or negative? Positive. Positive correlation. Do not use freehand like I did there, okay? 
Why not? Because you need to use a ruler if you're going to draw a trend line. That way you can make predictions using that, that line. Guys, the purpose of a trend line is so that you can make predictions using the equation. Okay? So if I was to take information here from my table, and what I want to do here is I want you to use a graphing calculator. Okay? Um, in order to... Actually, no, we're not going to use a graphing calculator on this one. Yeah, I know. Um, in order to do this one, um, I want you to go ahead and plot these points on an x-y axis. Okay? Yo. Okay, now what may help you out here, keep in mind that since all your x's and all your y's are positives, all you really need is the first quadrant of your graph. You don't need to put an actual xy um, or xy axes in there where you can see the positive and negative portions. You just need the positive part of x and the positive part of y there. Quadrant 1. So I make my y scale 3 and my x scale 2. Not something you have to do, but I decided to do that so that I could put all my points on there. Okay, positive, negative, no correlation? Positive. Yeah, definitely. definitely positive. Okay, when I'm dealing with this, this is depth in centimeters. Okay, this is time. Time is almost always your X. In minutes, if they give you a time. I guess we should write it. It's in minutes there. Okay, interpret the slope and the Y-intercept. Slope, we're dealing with depth per minute centimeters per minute okay so our slope I'd actually have to draw a line of best fit which should be pretty darn easy for this graph you just label the points on your looks like it crosses at six has a slope of about three halves or so does that really cross at six you can't have negative centimeters of water in a tub Oh, well, maybe it starts with water in there. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay, so y equals 3 halves x plus 6. Interpret the slope. That means for every 3 centimeters, or excuse me, every, every, two, every 3 centimeters, it takes 2 minutes to fill the tub 3 centimeters. So the slope is the rate at which the bathtub is filling. And the y-intercept is the depth of the tub before additional water started filling the tub. So this is saying it's it started with 6 centimeters, and it's filling at a rate of 3 centimeters per 2 minutes. Okay. Any questions there? All right. Hey, 